Hey, what is up everybody and welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast, the internet's best resource for students looking to get ahead, but a terrible resource for learning the secret formula to the Krabby Patty. Ooh, and boy do I want it. I want it too. I would break into any number of sealed buildings, rack up any number of breaking and entering charges, buy any number of spy gadgets and or tools to get my hands on it. But I just don't uh, think it's going to happen. Unrelated. Not too long ago, somebody on on Reddit I saw had went went through IMDb and listed like the top 15 rated SpongeBob episodes, and I need to watch them all now in reverse order. That would be a fun afternoon. Best playlist of all time. That would be a fun afternoon. Ooh, what did I say I wanted to watch when you guys played Wind Waker? Well, now I can't remember. Just make it that. Okay. Top 15 SpongeBob Done. episodes, well, it's Wind un- Waker Marathon. SpongeBob was under the sea. Wind Waker's on top of the sea. Or, oh, and I know what I can do while you guys are playing Wind Waker. I will just play uh, more Smash. That's fair. Because I'm just playing all the Smash right now. It's great. Though I have not played online yet. And I see a lot of people complaining in the Reddit about the online, and I'm like, ah, I don't care. Oh, I don't know. That's not, uh, you know, I, I bought it mostly to play the single player, to be completely honest. I bought it to play it with friends. Yeah. Well, I figured I didn't need my own copy to play with friends for the most part. I do because I need to get good. That's true. Because every time I played Smash with you and all of our friends back in Iowa, I was always terrible, and the only thing I could do is pick, pick Samus and stay away from everyone and, like, shoot missiles every once in a while. Yeah. Which will never actually get a KO, so I'll never win. So I've been working, and I don't even main Samus anymore. I got my main girl, Lucina. She's great. That's fair. I was Marth for a while, but then I realized, like, he's hard to position because you have to use the tip of the sword. And Lucina is basically just girl Marth, but you don't have to use the tip. Mm. The whole sword is great. That's so fair. it's a little easier. Yeah, it's good. Anyway, uh, I always forget to say our names, but this could be the first time that a person is listening to our podcast. Hello. So what's up, new listeners? My name's Thomas. I'm here, as always, with my good friend, Martin. We got coffee, so we're good. Well, wait, is yours coffee? Mine's a matcha latte. I am a man of culture. Is that coffee? So is that is that like literally just matcha, but with milk? Yeah. Except for in your case, I'm guessing not milk. It's soy milk. So mine is basically leaf and bean water. It sounds really good when I say it like that. I mean, mine is also bean water. Yeah, but it's it's bean not and leaf. cow water. Ooh, see, yeah. if you break everything down into what kind of water it is, yep, then we can learn about the world. Actually, one of our writers wrote an article about that. About cow not, water? Not um, that's a weird article. Not cow water, but bean water. It wasn't on our site. I think it was on Medium. He wrote a site about like rationality and reductionism and how people love to just imbue a lot of like sacredness and um, elitism into things like coffee. Oh yeah. And really, at the end of the day, it's just kind of murky it's just bean, bean water. water. Tea's just leaf water. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So it's really, it's not something to be smug about. People just like a lot of bitter drinks. Mm-hmm. I do like bitter drinks. Yeah. And I think people like to be smug about the fact that it's an acquired taste. Oh yeah. Well, it's like like it's something spicy, right? Like it it feels terrible, but you're mm-hmm. like, I'm really cool because I can eat the most terrible feeling one. Yeah. Though I do like spicy food. No, it tastes good. It tastes good, but and it for becomes me, like, like a the burn is. Okay, the burn is good when it's good. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you go all the way far, that's you're, true. You're gonna stop being like, "This is a tasty." I mean, everything. I everything is that like the, whatever position on the spectrum you want to be, right? Yeah. Because, like, to some degree, pain can be pleasurable. It's true. Like, if you go out and do a hard workout, that's great. But then, like, if you go too hard and break something, that's terrible. Yeah, well, so, I think I think yeah. the acquired taste part is really, really probably the main mm-hmm. main portion of it. Or the I don't know the the ceremonial nature of the preparation sometimes. That's true. I mean, let's let's be honest. Like a lot of tea ceremony culture and even like coffee preparation culture, to like it's for meditation sometimes, but it's also for elitism. Well, the tea ceremony like has like religious roots at and some sometimes points. Sometimes religious roots, but but I don't know. But like now, for like you know, like if I did it, yeah, it's just me being. <laughs> I spend twenty minutes pouring the water over the teapot to build the. Patina. I mean, I love it. I love every bit. But then again, if you love it, then hey. I love it. But I'm also you're, you're not also like not walking around there. telling people that I yeah. do it. I you're, didn't like, good well, morning. <laughs> I just performed a complex tea ceremony. <laughs> yeah. What did you do? And you're not out there being like, oh, you drink Lipton? You drink bagged tea? Come on. Yeah. Come on. No. Have some culture. Well, I would never say that no, because you, I don't talk to people that drink Lipton. 
Yeah, okay. You know what, though? <laughs> Counterpoint, you do like to call me uncultured swine for drinking coffee instead of tea sometimes. I really like swine as an insult. <laughs> it feels like so... Swine. It feels so like I'm elevating myself. I'm really full of myself in order to call somebody a swine. You know, pigs are pretty smart. They are pretty smart. They're pretty They smart can be creatures. smarter than dogs. Yeah. But uh, I'm just trying to compliment you. I'm saying you're smarter than a dog. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope I'm smarter than a dog. <laughs> Then again, uh, are we smarter than dogs? Um, Dude, a society we're better at dogs, Smash. Like, what would they? We are better at Smash. We do have thumbs. Yeah. But if they made like a dog, they weren't smart enough to invent Smash thumbs. Controller, I don't know, man. I was smart enough to invent my own thumbs when I was a baby. That's pretty smart. <laughs> That's, <laughs> okay, That's this pretty, podcast is now about incorrect interpretations of biology. Smart. I did learn that a lot of like the octopus's decision-making neurons are in its arms. That's cool. Yeah, it's not like a giant brain like we have. There's a really cool article about how scientists are really confused um, as to why octopuses, I, I don't know if that's the real pluralization of that term, but they just don't know why it became so intelligent. Apparently there's like a scientific it's, it's cool. principle that can trace the development of intelligence for many terrestrial animals like crows and um, even dolphins, I think. And then with cephalopods, they're just like, but why? Why does it need <laughs> intelligence? I don't know. Silly octopodes. Yeah, silly octopodes. Why do they need intelligence? And why do any of us need friends to make a shaky transition? Yeah, why do... Well, yeah. they, don't, they don't need friends. Why should we? They don't we? need friends. Why should we? Yeah, I don't need friends. I don't need friends. I told you I bought Smash to play the one player. Exactly. There are so many single player games out there, so many books, so many movies, so many solitary activities. Why would you ever need friends? So today's episode, what we're going to do is uh, tell you how to never have any friends and how you can be alone forever. This is actually important if you've got better things to do than yeah. talk to other people, which exactly. I do every day. Yeah. So what are the things that you should never do if you want to make sure that you never make any friends? This is going to This is gonna confuse me at some point. <laughs> I'm going to get confused. <laughs> Just to make this as painful we're gonna, we're as gonna possible. We're going to do it anyway. We're, we're doing like a bad advice episode. So do the opposite. Yeah. Unless you really do want to be alone forever and be a basement dweller. That's, I mean, hey, that's your prerogative. I feel like you don't even, if that's what you want, I feel like you've got the strength within you already. That's true. You could be like that guy from the movie Benchwarmers, the one who's afraid of the sun and he eats like sunscreen. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. That movie's not very oh, good. Oh, eating sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating sunscreen seems like a good tip. Don't eat sunscreen. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to protect your insides from the UV rays. Just put it on your skin. You're going to be good to go. Unless you're a mountain climber. When it gets through your skin, though, where does it go? Um, your insides. Oh, my gosh, it does. So cut out the middle, man, and eat the sunscreen. Yep. Disclaimer, don't eat the sunscreen. I realize that we're on, like, a professional podcast here. <laughs> not, not anymore. <laughs> Turn this into Comedy Info Geek so I can make bad recommendations and not have to qualify them. Yeah. All right. So, yes, this is a, this is a bad advice episode because I thought it would be fun to write it this way. Um, so we're going to talk about the things you should not do if you want to be alone forever. Number one. Never approach someone to strike up a conversation because they would obviously come to talk to you if they wanted to talk and they're probably busy right now anyway. That's probably true. Yeah. Just don't don't take the initiative. Yeah. They'll take it. They'll take it probably. Somebody else will take it. And if they, if they don't, then you, no skin off your back because you're cool being alone. Yeah. You know who is pretty cool when he's alone? The Lone Ranger. Actually, he had a friend. <laughs> 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 You ruined it. <laughs> and it was Johnny Depp. What a revelation. Look what you did. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. But if for some reason you are a crazy person who does want friends and you do want to approach someone to strike up a conversation, uh, for, the, for the one person who's listening to this and actually does want friends, I do want to mention something called the three-second rule. This is a pretty useful little mental hack. So essentially, if you see somebody and you want to go talk to them, whether it's at a networking event or it's a cute girl at the bar or whatever, the three-second rule says that you may need to make the decision to go up and talk to them or not within three seconds and then commit to it. Because if you give yourself permission to think about whether or not you should, you will always construct some reason in your head as to why it's a bad idea. Because humans are risk mitigators. Yeah. And we love to construct a narrative to explain why the unknown is probably dangerous and why the known is probably safe and we should stick with it. I do like safe. 
And also, the longer the longer you would wait to talk to them, the weirder it does kind of get. That's true. If you if they've like yeah. caught you glancing their way like over the last four hours, and now finally yeah. you're like, hi. And, what have you been doing? Well, it depends on like their level of emotional intelligence and awareness because they, uh, the right kind of person may think, okay, that person was just shy. Like, let me give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you're right about the fact that the longer you wait, the more likely it is they're going to be a little creeped out. Well, especially like, okay, so I, I could see it if, the, if you're at a, like a big party, lots of rooms to be in. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, like if we were in this room, right, and there was somebody else and I just didn't talk to them for two hours. And then I'm I like talked to the guy to in the corner that's yeah, been there like ever it, since we started. Yeah. Like that would be, that would be weird, right? They'd be yeah. like, you were, you've been, you've I been, told you no eye contact. You've been pretty close to me the whole time. You could have said, <laughs> you said hi at any, any point. There's no, you haven't been doing anything else. I've seen you. Yeah, it's true. Been, it's been looking at your phone, man. Yeah. Oh, phones are, that's another reason like phones kind of suck sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because it makes it so easy to be like, actually, I got a text I got to respond to, so I'm just not going to talk. Yeah, actually, I'm checking. There's a Pokestop here. Yep. There is a Pokestop. Yeah. You got to get those Pokemon yeah, so I you actually, can import them into Let's Go. I make a point when I'm using my phone. Now, if I need to pick up my phone for something, I'll stop walking. Step mm. off to the side. That's because, a good because idea. like, yes, yeah, sometimes I need to check my phone for something. But I think that walking past everyone and everything while using it is the bigger issue. So now I'm just yeah. like, if it's important, it's important enough to stop. That makes sense. All right. What's our next one? Well, our next one is uh, definitely do not attempt to work on yourself in order to become a better at, better at conversation or less of an introvert. You're just born that way, and uh, you can't change yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like going to the gym. No. Like, you go to the gym, you can grow your muscles, but if you're an introvert and you're bad at conversation, you cannot get better. That's just how you are. Well, if you were going to get better at it, you'd get better at it just by thinking about it. Yeah. You know, by yourself with no practice. What do you think? Like, talking to people is like a muscle? No. No. You should be able to talk to somebody, and if you can't, you're a failure. Yep. But that's okay, because there is um, Had a Full Boyfriend on Steam. That'll teach you. For, like, $17. That'll teach you real fast. Well... Also, those birds will be your friends, no matter what. Yep. And they're just easier to deal with. I love birds. Birds are simpler. They have smaller brains. They don't get as angry at complex issues. Nope. You know, you're never going to have to have a tough conversation with a pigeon. No, they get flustered sometimes. They do get flustered, but then you can just throw some bread at them. Yeah, then they like you again. (laughs) Simple creatures. Okay. So to turn this one around. um, Yes. So uh, let let me start this way. We love to put ourselves in the introvert camp or the extrovert camp. We love to sorting hat ourselves in terms of our our social proclivities. Yeah. And I believe that there is some truth to this. And I believe that the, the categorization of introvert or extrovert as it pertains to where you get your energy is accurate and correct. Like I am in that sense mostly an introvert because I get my energy by doing something on my own or by doing something with somebody that I feel very close to. I do not get energy going out and meeting new people, going out to social gatherings. I spend energy doing that. Yeah. But I have worked on myself and I have gotten to the, to the point where if I'm in a situation where the context is something I'm comfortable with, like honestly business kind of stuff, I get excited to go meet new people and talk. And I'm, I'm spending energy the whole time, but I enjoy it. And I enjoy being the center of attention. I enjoy going out and talking with people. It's fun. It's not just a chore now. Yeah, It used to be a chore. And over time, as I have practiced and gotten positive feedback and even made mistakes, but then realized what I could do to fix those, it's just, it's gotten to the point where I now look forward to it. Yeah, and I, I feel like you need to to do it long enough that you do get some instances of positive feedback because otherwise, the first few times you're probably going to feel weird. Mm-hmm. You know, you're probably going to say something dumb, and it's going to be hilarious, and you're going to love that story in a year. Just kidding, it'll keep you up at night. <laughs> but if you stop there, you won't get to the point where you have anything good to make it seem worth it. You'll just remember the bad parts forever. Yep. You need to f- force yourself through to practice through the parts that are going to be awkward, mm-hmm. and then eventually it's going to pay off. I mean, I'm I'm an introvert too. But I mean, in the first few episodes of this, a long time ago, before we had video, like there are some episodes where I'm like shaking a little bit. I'm nervous to be on this. This takes practice. It's hard for me to be in front of people. This is kind of doing that. Yeah. Actually, 
I think when I started the podcast, it wasn't, I wasn't shaking. I know that, but the first episode I ever did, we were still all roommates back in university planes. Yeah. And I waited for you guys to go off and do something somewhere. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys had gone to GameStop to do a, like a pre-order or something, but you were all gone and I shut the hallway door and I shut my room door. So there are two doors and then I just recorded for 45 minutes and I had barely anything written down for the outline. It was all pretty much extemporaneous and that was what I needed to get started. And now like I can have a conversation with you. I've done probably a hundred interviews at this point or more so I can have a conversation with a random person. Um, but it's all practice. Yeah. And if you want to see me real nervous, uh, this may be gone in the future because it does not need to be on the site anymore. But the about page on College of Vogue Geek has a video that I shot before I started doing videos, like way before. And it's awkward. And uh, I was really nervous doing it. And the only reason I did it is because I was a huge fan of Corbett Barr from uh, Think Traffic, which is now Fizzle. And his yeah. about page on his site had this video where he was just sitting there kind of like on camera explaining what the site was about. And I was such a fan of him. I was like, oh, I want to do that too. I don't want to just have a text about page. I want to have a video. So I shot this terrible video of me awkwardly trying to make like a Bioshock reference and tying <laughs> it to College and Book Geek. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, and I was terribly nervous doing it. And now I can get on camera and I'm fine. So practice. Yeah. Now All you, the practice. You could probably do a better job of working in a Bioshock reference now. I probably, I mean, I have. There you go. There, I think it's like episode uh, maybe like 10 or something where I, I did the Bioshock reference again and it was better. There it is. Um, I used to do a lot of really stupid jokes to intro the CIG podcast. There's like a, a Bane impression on one of them. <laughs> 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 it's like, ladies and gentlemen, behold the instrument of your liberation. <laughs> I am. I'm not going to go out of my way to find that episode. Oh yeah, if you want to cringe, if you want to cringe, go listen to season one at the very beginning. I sometimes get emails from people <laughs> saying like, I listened to season one or the first like I've gone from the beginning all the <laughs> You're way just through. Just like, like, oh no. <laughs> oh, so you got to slowly <laughs> witness my progression from uh, a person who produces a dumpster fire of a podcast <laughs> to something that is decently listenable. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I think we hit our stride, I mean, pretty early. Like, I don't know. I'm not ashamed of anything I've done, but I think like once we get into like the teens, I'm really not ashamed. It was like the first 10 where I'm just like, all right, I'm experimenting. It's shaky. It's Yeah, but weird. you could have easily given up at that point. I could have. In fact, I do remember listening to an episode of the Smart Passive Income podcast where I don't remember if it was a guest or he, him saying it. Uh, he said that people who get to their seventh episode of their podcast are likely to keep it going because hmm. a lot of people quit their podcasts. There's so many podcasts. I mean, iTunes is a veritable graveyard of podcasts that had like five episodes and then fizzled out. Yeah. So I remember, and this was pure coincidence, but he, Pat Flynn, was my guest on the seventh episode. So I introed it by saying, hey, this is my seventh episode, Pat, so it looks like I'm going to keep going. And uh, what are we on, 243? Yeah. We kept going. Yeah, quite a ways. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So practice in any way that helps you get yourself out there. And the other thing that I would mention here is um, you have to get comfortable with the fact that some conversations are going to be awkward and some are going to fizzle out. Like I met someone at the climbing gym and we climbed together and belayed each other, but uh, we just had a, such a hard time having a conversation. Yeah. Like we had nothing in common other than the fact that we like to climb. So I tried to steer the conversation in that way. I was like, oh, this, this route's really cool. It's really slopey. I've been having a lot of problems with it. And, you know, try to talk about kind of some of the technical stuff around rock climbing. And that didn't work very well. And so I was like, oh, what are your favorite movies? And they listed, listed off a bunch of movies that I'd never, really never seen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of how that one went. Um, but on the other hand, I've met another person at the climbing gym and now they're one of our really good friends. And they came over and did murder mystery party with us. Yeah. Like not, not everything's going to work out. You, there's going to be failure. Yeah, absolutely. And the more you can embrace that, the better it'll be. Cause it's going to mm -hmm. be awkward. It's going to feel weird. You're going to yeah. remember it for the rest of your life and you're going to wish that you remembered other things instead. Yeah. 
But well, it's like people who um, like date, like they'll tell you it's a numbers game. You yeah. Know? You're not, some people will magically bump into the person that they're super compatible with on the subway or whatever, but some people won't. And so you go out and you meet people deliberately and maybe you meet nine that aren't the person you're looking for, but because you went and saw 10, yeah. you found the one, you know? So uh, same thing with friends. The other thing that I would mention uh, about working on yourself to become less of an introvert or uh, better at conversation or better at getting out there, go and watch the channel Charisma On Command. My friends Charlie and Ben run this channel and their videos are just fantastic and they're all about building your social skills, building your charisma, building your ability to make connections with people. Everything they do is great. So like anybody who watches my videos should also be subscribed to them. And I think a lot of people probably already are. Uh, yeah, all right. Thing number three, it's back to loneliness. Never be the leader. Always wait for someone else to call you or plan an event because uh, why, why, why would you put in all the effort? It's so much work. Yeah. Do you know how long it took me to get everyone's contact information to form this stupid league? Like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> See, I, what I love about this tip <laughs> is that especially if you're you're an introvert, there are a lot of like introvert friendly activities that I think if you like, you watch anime, you play a lot of video games, you, mm. you uh, like to read a bunch of, a lot of like books. A lot of these are very introvert friendly things. So if you're friends with people that like all those things and yep. they're all introverts, then all of you could not be the leader and then you'll never have to hang out. Yep. That's true. That's the best part. Yeah. And then you don't even have to be friends. Yeah. You can just let those relationships fizzle and eventually you'll be truly alone. Yeah. How beautiful would that be? Yep. There's something beautiful about the number one. I like it. A singular entity floating through the cosmos. <laughs> Time to think about existence. <laughs> Remember, Martin, from last week, there's beauty and ephemerality. There's also beauty and permanence, Tom. <laughs> there is no permanence. But it would be beautiful. The only permanence is stillness, and that's eventual. Oh, okay. I'll get there. <laughs> this is becoming the the, the uh, dark philosophy podcast. I honestly think about that a lot. Like in college and maybe even in high school once, Buddhist monks came. Actually, yeah, this happened in high school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Buddhist monks came to my school to build a mandala, which is this circular piece of art that is made – over the course of like a week of full-time hours, um, just laying colored sand in intricate patterns. And it takes the monks, I think, eight hours a day for five days to make this. And basically the moment they're done, they do a little ceremony and they sweep it away. Yeah, I love it. And when I was in high school, my brain raged at this. I was like, how could you spend 40 hours making this beautiful piece of art and then just sweep it away immediately. Like you didn't even take any time to appreciate it. And the point of the mandala, as I understand it, I'm sure there's more nuance to it that I don't get right now, but the point is to appreciate the ephemerality of life and appreciate that there is beauty in that and there's beauty in the experiences we have even though they don't last and even though they pass. And yeah, when I was in high school, I was just like, no, I gotta build something that lasts and not, nothing is worthwhile unless it is something that's like permanent, but nothing's permanent. Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of people struggle with that because they're just like, well, if nothing's permanent, what's the point? Nothing lasts. Well, at least for me, the point is that we enjoy it while it does, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, this mindset would actually be, this is, this is a useful reverse tip for me right now because now I'm gonna be staying in Colorado for at least a little longer than I thought. And, oh, I, yeah. and I had been pushing off going to anything mildly social because I was like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to make new like acquaintances right now. Mm. I'm busy. I'm going to be leaving. But now I'm not. And in all yeah. actuality, it would be better to simply enjoy those short term friendships that I may or may not form mm -hmm. rather than intentionally never form something because it won't last. Yeah. Actually, you know, this reminds me, I don't think the podcast listeners know about the change in plans. Oh. Yeah. I think we have uh, on the house buying episode, we talked about moving back to the Midwest. But uh, the funny thing happened, you, planning <clears> on moving <throat> to the Midwest, decided to not try to take advantage of Denver so you didn't get attached to it. Yep. I did the opposite. And Anna and I started taking advantage of Denver. 
And I, I'm not sure if it was like super intentional. I think it kind of started with my cousin visiting and I was trying to figure out something to do with him. And I was like, all right, I always take people hiking. That's kind of fun, but like, I don't want to go hiking today. What else can we do? And I'm like, let's go rent mountain bikes and go to a bike park. I've never done that. So we rented mountain bikes. We went and I was like, oh, this is one of the most fun things I've ever done. And I spent the rest of the summer and fall going to bigger and bigger bike parks and falling in love with that sport. And then ended up meeting friends. And eventually I heard Anna just like offhandedly say one day, like, oh, I, I kind of like it here now that I don't have a full-time job and like I have time to enjoy it. And I just sort of like let that sit because I had kind of committed to leaving. But, and this is something that I try to think about a lot in all decisions. I was like, all right, well, have I, have I set myself on a path based on a decision that I made a long time ago that I no longer agree with? And I'm just doing it because of that consistency principle. Yeah. Is there a middle path? Is there an, another way where, you know, I don't have to like totally break everything I've set up, but there's like a, another solution. So I just asked her, I'm like, look, I don't want to change our plans on a whim right now, but you mentioned this. So let's talk about it. Like, do you want to stay here or not? And, um, she was like, actually, I kind of do, you know, and I think like, it's, it's really just the fact that we have told people and we feel committed that I'm leaving, but I don't want to leave. So we aren't leaving. Yep. And maybe that means that it will take me longer to buy a house in our house buying series in the podcast. It will, will take probably longer. mean that since the houses are by default, <laughs> like 1.8 times. They are a little bit more the expensive. Cost. Yes. But, um, you know, when I moved here, we made far less. Yeah. So when I moved here, I was like, oh, buying a house is years in the future. And we, you know, we don't make enough now where I'm like, oh, I could buy one right now. But as an entrepreneur, I believe that income can increase. We just got to make the right moves. So, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's the whole story of what's going on in our lives, I guess. Yeah. A little I guess side there. The, the moral, I guess, is that uh, small friendships and stuff can be temporary and that's okay. If I go out yes. of my way to meet people through the next year, I'll probably enjoy it more even if I leave. Yeah, and I mean, is there like, how much do you wanna talk about what your future plans may or may not be? Oh, I don't know what they are right now. Okay. I was gonna leave Colorado, but I broke my finger and the American yeah. medical system is expensive. So now it doesn't make sense to move right now and uproot everything. It is expensive. Especially because I might need another surgery on it. Yep. But that well, means I should make the most of being here by making friends. We'll just keep building up, yep. man. It's gotta build up. All right, uh, number four is yours. Number four, only talk to the people you know about things. Wait, only talk to the people <laughs> you know, you know about. about things. Okay, I got it, <laughs> I got it now, text is hard. Only talk to the people you know about things that need to be addressed, straight to the point. Yep. Only talk to, talk, talk to students about homework and tests and only talk to about coworkers about work. Don't talk about nothing else. Don't compliment them. Don't have yeah. a conversation because you know them for one thing and one thing only. Exactly. And if you start knowing them for two things, well, now it's hard to keep track of. Well, if you know, yeah, and if you have something that you identify with, you know, like two areas with somebody, then that's that's a slippery slope. Yeah, you that's start, how you, you get you friends. Start, yeah, that's how you get friends. You want friends? I don't want to know. You get friends. I, I know you played the guitar. I don't want to know anything else. Don't tell me. Keep it out. We are work proximity. I'm ra I'm erasing it. What what is it? Work works <laughs> work proximity associates. Yes, that's what we are. That's so, it. I don't want to know anything about any. Of Every time you start lives. to talk about personal stuff, I just put my fingers in my ears. Yep. This is how you make friends. Every conversation I will have with you must consist of 100 words or less. Or fewer. <laughs> or or fewer. <laughs> I knew I said it wrong. Ah, I was trying to get it right too. I didn't want us to be friends, so I pedantically corrected you. There you go. Yeah. But otherwise, just, otherwise we might be friends. That was just amusing to me. Oh no. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is something that a lot of people tend to do. They put the people that they know as acquaintances into little boxes. My classmates are students. I will talk to them about homework. My coworkers are coworkers. I will talk to them about work. And this, I think it just comes to, it comes down to effort and actually thinking of it. Um, the way you get friends is by talking to people about other things. So if you notice somebody talking about the fact that they've been playing Smash and you play Smash, start talking to them about that. Yeah. Or ask them how their weekend was. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have to meet somebody who does my biggest passion to become friends with them. But a lot of the times your work proximity associates or your classroom proximity associates could become good friends if you just talk to them. 
Yeah, and you can't guess what you might have in common with somebody. Nope. Maybe you don't have the number one thing, but they like three of the other like secondary tier things you like. Mm-hmm. You can't know if you don't talk to them. And you never know what they may be curious about. Yeah. Like you got people around you who maybe aren't rock climbers now, but they maybe you say something about the fact that you're a rock climber. They're like, oh, I've always wanted to try that. Okay, yeah. set it up. Except for never be the leader because that's how you get friends. That's true. Don't do that. Back to number three. This week's episode of our show is brought to you by our friends over at Brilliant, who make an amazing learning enrichment tool for anyone wanting to learn math, science, or computer science more effectively. They have an awesome library of courses ranging from topics like calculus and algebra and math for quantitative trading and finance, science courses like gravitational physics, quantum computing, and uh, even classical mechanics, and computer science courses on things like algorithms, sorting algorithms, uh, stacks, heaps, queues, all the kind of stuff that you probably know about and I know barely anything about computer memory and lots of other great topics. And the best part about Brilliant is that they take a very active approach to developing their courses because they know that when you are thrown immediately into tough problems, your attention is engaged, your interest remains high during the entire learning process, and the whole thing is more effective. So whatever class you decide to take within their library, you're gonna find yourself immediately thrown into something that you may get stuck on, but that's gonna keep your interest pretty high. They also have an amazing wiki full of lots of different explanations, lots of detailed information on the concepts that are that are gone over within their courses, and that has a lot of example problems as well. So when you do get stuck, you can go there, you can reference things, you can easily come back and uh, answer those problems that you might have been stuck on. There's also a really cool community feature. So if you're still stuck, you can go ask questions and you can get additional challenges from people within that community. And of course, throughout this entire process, you're gonna be improving your skills within the topics that you have chosen, whether it's math or science or computer science, but because all of their courses are so active, you're gonna be building your problem solving skills on a general level as well. Every time you solve a tough problem in one area, you get better at solving problems in general. So regardless of how interested you are in the specific topics, I would recommend giving their courses a try because they'll help you become a better problem solver, which will help you in your career. So if you want to start learning for free today, you can go over to brilliant.org slash college info geek. And if you are one of the first 83 people to go and sign up with that link from this episode, you're going to get 20% off their annual premium subscription as well. Huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode and being a gigantic supporter of College Info Geek in general. And I also got to give a big thanks to our second sponsor, on this episode, which is Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service that is dedicated specifically to addressing our lifelong quest to learn and explore and understand new things. And on their platform, you're gonna find tons of really well-made, high-quality documentaries and other content spanning science and nature, history, technology, and lots of other topics. And if you're the kind of person who wants to start developing a broad array of knowledge in tons of different areas like me, if you're the kind of person who walks into a bookstore and just can't decide where you wanna start Start because you want to know everything, I think Curiosity Stream is going to be a really cool service that you're going to want to check out. In fact, it was developed by the founder of the Discovery Channel, which was probably my favorite channel on TV growing up for that reason, because I was just so curious about many things. And I kind of see it as like the digital modern equivalent of that channel. And of course, being that modern equivalent, you're going to find Curiosity Stream on basically any platform you use, including your web browser, iOS, Android, Roku, Amazon Fire, and Kindle, and many other platforms. Platforms. Now, when you log into Curiosity Stream, you're going to find a ton of different choices for things that you could watch, but I do want to give you a recommendation for where you might want to start. And it's a documentary series called Pioneers of Aviation, which goes through the entire history of the development of flight, starting from the Wright brothers' first experiments with powered flight using tracks and really rudimentary materials, and going all the way to the space age where we first developed the rocket and landed on the moon. So if that sounds interesting to you, or you want to check out any of the other series and documentaries on their platform, you can get unlimited access today starting at just $2.99 per month by going over to curiositystream.com slash college info geek. And if you do go to that URL, you can get your first 30 days completely free. Go to that URL and then use the promo code college info geek during the signup process. Once again, that is curiositystream.com. That is C-U-R-I-O-S-I-T-Y-S-T-R-E- am.com slash college info geek. And hopefully you can spell that one since you are a subscriber to our podcast and use the promo code college info geek when you sign up to get that first 30 days completely free. Big thanks as well to curiosity stream for sponsoring our show and being a supporter of this podcast in general. And let's get back into it. All right. Uh, number five, don't take an interest in things other people do because doing so would mean that you're being fake 
if that's not what you're already interested in. That's fair. Plus, if you take an interest in other people, they might think that you're interested in them and like that you like them. Well, I would hate to be open-minded about new hobbies. Don't do that. Ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> reversal here. This is how you get people to like you. In fact, um, I never finished the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I do recommend it based on what I have read. Um, the only reason I didn't finish that book is because I started reading it when I was in a frame of mind that I wanted to take very detailed notes about every book I read. Hmm. And that can eventually make you burn out. I took super detailed notes on the entirety of The Power of Habit, which are on my website, uh, my personal website. And then I moved on to How to Win Friends and Influence People and did the same thing for probably like five chapters and then eventually got busy. But the biggest thing I remember from that book was how plainly he stated the importance of taking an interest in other people and making them feel special. And I don't think it was him that said this, but somebody said like, people will forget what you said to them. They'll forget what you did for them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. I'm familiar with this quote, but I, I cannot who remember it. who said it. Maybe I have, it was, a, it was I have a hint, Abraham, but I don't, I don't like guessing when I'm wrong. It's probably Abraham so. Khan, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't like guessing when I might be wrong, Possibly so I'll look it up later. George Einstein. It was one of those two. George Einstein. Some guy that has George. like a wig, and he's dead now. Something like that. Yep. <laughs> but it's true. People tend to remember those who made them feel good feel comfortable, feel at home, feel like they mattered, feel like their opinion was, you know, that they cared about that. So even if somebody is interested in something that you're not super into, you can take an interest because they're interested in it. I remember you saying this on the significant other episode, how you and Ashley don't have oh, yeah. all the same interests. In fact, I would say like primarily you would say your interests are very different than hers. Yeah. And there's only a few that you guys are really, really both mutually into, but you're interested in the things that she likes because she's interested in them and you like her. Yeah. So well, the stuff that she's, it must be interesting to her for a reason. So mm -hmm. like, what is it making you feel and why? Why are you so into this? Yeah. And like, she'll listen to me ramble about some linguistics nonsense and I'm all excited. And she's probably not going to read a linguistics book nope. to, you know, dive any deeper into it, but it's still interesting that I even bothered to think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and side tip here, it's it's good to occasionally read the books that your significant other wants you to read. Yeah, at least occasionally. Yeah. I mean, like, um, I recommended Name of the Wind to Anna. That's a good and one. And she loved it. It's a good one. And then she had me read the Shades of Magic series. I need to finish it, but I do really enjoy it. I've been really bad about reading books this year, which we're that's going to come up in next week's episode. Our little uh, year-end review. Ah. It has not been a good reading year for me. Fair. <laughs> I think it's actually part of um, the burnout that I've been feeling is that I just haven't, I haven't like made time to learn a whole lot of new things for myself. That's fair. It's sort of like worked. And then I, I invested heavily in my personal life, but not in, um, a, not in a dimension. Like I think that learning and the creative expression that comes from learning new things is very important for me. And that's one area that I think has been malnourished. Hmm. for a little bit, all right. mainly due to just lack of time. But we'll get into that next week. Uh, the next one, I think, is yours. Yeah, number six. What am I on? Oh, okay. Do not try new activities just to make friends. You shouldn't have to do that. There are enough people that already like the things you like. Also, sure. you would never like anything new. If you try things, you'll just hate them. Yeah, exactly. That's dumb. You That's... already found the things you like. You already know. You were born knowing what mm -hmm. you liked, even if it was mostly just the thing that was closest to you at the time and well, was convenient. That was just meant to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. The video games that you played, the genres of music you're into. It was a bad idea for me into. to try out photography. That was a dumb idea. I should have just stuck idea. to video games. Yeah, you really didn't do much of it, did I don't, you? I don't know why you I did that. didn't like, go for 200 days posting a photo every day. I don't day. know why I did that. That was dumb. <laughs> I discovered something about myself and met some other people along the way. Dumb. Yep. And you know what? I tried mountain biking. Why would I have done that? Well, that's a good question, Tom. I haven't had a good experience with that. <laughs> I do still kind of feel guilty about that one. I'm sorry. Uh, things happen. Yeah, the things do happen. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, I tried uh, think first before trying a new dangerous activity. Be Actually, cautious. One, one, so the mountain biking thing, I, I probably could have predicted that I liked that one. 
I could not have predicted that I would like figure skating so much. Yeah. And there was a lot of, I think, like societally ingrained stuff. Like, oh, you're, you know, uh, super masculine. Yeah, you've been like dude. a weightlifting. Yeah. Figure sorta. skating's not for you. You know, even though we have a figure skater on the table right now. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was like, I didn't even decide to go do that. A friend was like, and here's another thing you shouldn't do if you want to be alone forever. A friend asked me, hey, will you take this learn to ice skate class with me because I want to play hockey, but I don't know how to ice skate. And I don't want to just take it with a bunch of kids. That's I fair. I said, sure, I'll do that. It sounds fun. I'll do that. And uh, I ended up with figure skates just because the guy at the shop said they're better for people who are learning. And my friend was like, no, nah, I'm getting hockey skates because I want to be a hockey player. And I was like, I don't really know what I want to do on the ice. So I'm just going to get the best beginner skates. And then I kind of fell in love with figure skating. Yep. And have made friends through it. And there's been a lot of people who maybe don't do it, but they're always interested when I bring it up or when they see a clip or something. Yeah. It's been eye opening. So I guess if you do want to make friends for some weird reason, you got to go out and try some new things. Yeah. You got to be open minded to life's mm-hmm. experiences, man. Yeah. I mean, our, our newest like good friend in Denver, we met through rock climbing, which was a new thing for us. Like, yeah. We had never tried it. And then we just went and did it and struck up a conversation and now he comes over and hangs out and does other things. Yep. You know, that's a, that's a big thing as well. Um, I don't think I wrote this down here, but when you make a friend in one dimension, um, the way to sort of take that friendship further is to invite them to do something that has nothing to do with that dimension that you're used to hanging out with them in. So if you have like a rock climbing partner, invite them over for a Halloween party. Or ask them to go out to a movie or something. Yeah, you know, let them know that they're not boxed in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's very easy to feel like, oh, I'm that person's rock climbing friend. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. then they, they might shut down opportunities because they're like, they don't want to hang out with me. I just rock climb with them. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't sent them any different signals, then you know, you're, both, you're both holding back because exactly. you've decided to get stuck in a box. Yeah. So someone's got to be the leader. Shouldn't be you, though, because you need time for how to a boyfriend yep. in your basement. <laughs> yep, I'm going to play that. I'm 100% it later. All right, next up. Don't make notes or calendar events about birthdays or other dates when you might want to reach out to someone or send them a gift. Ooh. Because if you do that, you're actually a heartless robot. You should remember things automatically. And the fact that you don't means you were destined to be alone forever. That's Why fair. would you try to fight destiny? That's fair. You can't fight destiny. You can't. You really can. We're all locked onto a path. And why would you want to write these things down? And Facebook will tell you. It will tell you. You know? And then you can just become one of the number that Facebook collates into like a little... Uh, well, 123 people said this. You can just be one of those. Facebook will also definitely tell you if you never check Facebook. Yep. <laughs> I used to use Facebook for, for birthdays. Uh, and then I stopped checking Facebook because every time I go to Facebook, yeah, there's like 50 notifications and 49 of them are dumb. I do not want to sift through them. And I got rid of my news feed a long time ago. So what even is the point? Yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of Facebook. Mm-hmm. So now um, you just have calendar events. Yeah, I, I literally have a birthdays calendar. You know what? Even even if I did get their birthday from Facebook, I always make a point to text or mm-hmm. message, something that's more one-on-one. Yeah. That's like, I know Facebook gave me the option to in literally half a second just type out. Hey, boom, boom. Oh, it's, yeah, but no, I, I but I it. like I like want to make a point to be like, hey, I specifically like I I knew your birthday was today for the record. Yeah, I'm well, texting plus on you. Facebook, it like it collects all the happy birthdays. Yeah, like into they're not a weird even window. gonna know. I want to open it up for an oppor- opportunity for conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like Facebook. I use it. I use it because it is I a socially it, significant I use it to platform. To upload and I, the podcast, or you know, we do upload the podcast. I, there. I use it for that. You know, I mean, I'll be like totally honest, my the fan page I have there is like, I, I want it because Facebook is a socially significant platform, but yeah. like, that's what it's for, for me. Like the personal side, yeah. I just don't use it anymore. No. Whenever I get a message on Facebook, I'm like, Oh no. Well, I don't even please just text me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's number eight? Number eight. This is important here. Do not waste your time. If a person you meet doesn't immediately become your great friends. Now, true important in this tip is I want you to completely ignore any studies, especially mentioned in any life hacker articles posted in April of this year <laughs> that say that uh, it seems that it takes roughly 50 hours of time together to go from acquaintance to casual friend and around 90 hours to become a real good friend and maybe 200 hours to be a, like a best friend. It yep. Completely ignore the statistics right there. 
that they found in this interesting study that we will certainly link to in the show notes so that you can ignore it. So that you can ignore it. That way you know what numbers to avoid. Well, you got to know which links to avoid. The, the reason that I have the closest friends I have is because we just clicked. It's not yeah. because I've known Clyde longer than anybody that I still talk to, yeah. and I've spent countless hours with you, partic- especially this, which adds, like, extra hours every single day. Well, no, when we we're met, I was like, we were just, we knew each other instantly. Immediately. It was like, it was like yep. we had known each other forever. And yep. I don't know what that phrase means because it implies that knowing each other for a long time <laughs> helps. <laughs> this negatively worded episode doesn't it, make sense sometimes. It confuses me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, you, you, you're you not going to be a close friend without spending a lot of time with no. people. You, no, need to, you need to put in the hours. This is why people don't make friends as an adult. Because your childhood friends were already there when you had no responsibilities and nothing to do. So you just kind of yeah. sat around for like eight hours doing nothing. And that mm-hmm. counts towards your 90 hours. That counts. Yeah. But now we're just like, uh, we're busy. I guess I could maybe see you like for 30 minutes every two weeks. We could work yeah. that in there. How many years does that take before you become best friend 200 hour material? Mm-hmm. It takes a while. You know, and so the study uh, likes to put it in numbers, but yeah. I think you need to look beyond that. Because there are definitely friends yeah, I've I, met I where, probably wouldn't measure these numbers and yeah. really use them. I mean, there are friends I've met where two times hanging out were like best friends. And then there are people I've met where it's like it t- it's a slow burn. It takes a long time. But eventually you start to sort of break some walls down. Um, the other thing, though, is it, I think the, the longer you spend per session, the more it counts. Yeah. Like, oh, I just met you for trivia night for 30 minutes every other week like over the course of six months, then you do rack up a pretty significant amount of time. But I think if you hung out for like a f- several hours- It's not deep time. Those hours probably count for more. No, this is actually similar to uh, something in, for language learning. Like if I practice with a 20 minute conversation every day for a year, it, it's not gonna matter because just like meeting a friend, almost all that 20 minutes is the small talk that you get to warm up a con- yeah. Hey, how are you doing? What did you do today? What did you do yesterday? My name is this. You never get to the parts where you're like sitting there bored and you just bring up a random topic. Mm-hmm. It's like- Yeah, a lot is warm up actually. It's warm up small talk. And if you're not there for long enough to get past that into the real depthy parts of a good conversation, then you're they are just going to be an acquaintance yep. like forever. You know what? So I remember- listening to the Cortex podcast once and they had talked about how usually when they record, they will have like an hour of just warm up that they don't record. And it's just, it it is useless for like the show, but it just is, uh, it's like almost needed to get into the conversation. That makes sense. I guess to get into Mm -hmm. the flow of things. And you and I don't do this. Like you come over and we just immediately start podcasting, but this is the second in a batching session of episodes yeah. And I think this episode has been more organic feeling, at least, than the first one we did. It takes some time to warm up. I think it does. And, I mean, we've known each other for a while. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not acquaintances at this point. So Yeah. Yeah, we've known each other for quite some so time. So it still takes some time to really warm up and get into something. And this is why it's uh, – sometimes it's hard to talk to an old friend. Yeah. You know, like when I try to – when I want to hang out with friends that, I, like, I moved away from them to go to college, I love them. They're great friends. But we need – some time together to really get into stuff because mm-hmm. otherwise it's just catching up. It's always catching up. Yeah. It's never actual being friends. It's just catching up. And that's like, that's not the same thing. You're, you're it's giving like, them status updates on your life, but you're not making them a part of it. Yeah. It's like service level. Yeah. Yeah. It's like every time you meet, it's like digging a hole. Yeah. You, you need to, you need to talk stuff. to them frequently enough that you don't just need to tell them the last stuff they miss. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have that there, but I think like it's almost good enough for its own tip. It's like, let there be time to warm up. And if you can, schedule longer times to hang out. Yeah. Because 30 minutes is not, that's not much. I mean, it's something, it's better than nothing. Ooh, you know, and but, uh, seeing movies together, it gives you no opportunity to talk. So while this is fun, it, yeah, it, there, there are activities that are going to be a little better for the social growth as Go opposed see- to just... Yeah, like go see a movie with friends, but then like go out for drinks or yeah, like go if, do a board if that's game all you ever do, you're just yeah. It's such a weird like antisocial social thing. It really is. Stare at a screen and don't talk to me for an hour. Going to movies was like my family's way to have fun growing yeah. up, 
And like, I think, you know, I don't have like a zillion regrets and it's not like something that weighs on me, but I do think it would have been better had we more often decided to do something that involved interaction. Yeah. Like movies are cool. I, I'm, I still go to them sometimes, mm-hmm. but I mean, I love movies, but don't, but they're not for Don't that. only do things that aren't really that social like that. It kind of mm-hmm. tricks you into think you're doing social activity. I, I think they are useful to a degree, though, because there is value in being able to be with somebody without talking. Um, in fact, a friend of mine was talking to me about this the other day. She was like, some friends will say, like, isn't it awkward that we haven't talked in, like, 10 minutes? It's like, well, now it is. Yeah. Because you brought it up. No, but silence it wasn't before. is fun. Well, yeah. we, we used to all hang out. Well, there would be like 20 of us all in the apartment in college. Mm-hmm. And like, we're not all talking to each other. We're breaking off. Some of us are just like playing games off in a corner, not talking to anybody. But yep. we're still getting a little bit closer to everybody there because they yeah. feel like like they're part of your community. They're part of your village if they're just constantly there. You don't know how much I miss that. It's a great feeling. Like I, I complained about it at the time because I was like, there's always 20 people. Ah. Yeah. But now I'm like, I wish there was 20 people. Yeah, I mean, when we when we lived back there, like people, they would just walk in. Yeah, would never knock, just walked in, and that was normal. And somebody would be watching Power Rangers, and somebody would be playing Good Portal show. on their computer, and just people were over, and it was fine. Like they were just there, and like your friends, and you still do things together sometimes. But I don't know, it was it was just great to like be able to do my own thing, but yeah. know there were friends there. Well, I feel too. like community is kind of a thing that we. Yeah, we I lose think that, that. this point in time we seem we don't seem to have it a lot we're really mobile we can go anywhere we're interconnected mm-hmm. more but at the same time we're we're not by the, to the people around us as much yeah we don't need to talk to them we have friends on reddit instead well it's like that freedom is slavery kind of thing like uh freedom of choice actually kind of traps you into certain patterns of behavior yeah uh i've, I've read things about um like tinder dating especially if, if you're like a very attractive person you have a lot of matches people will say like, oh, very attractive people won't put a whole lot of investment into a conversation a lot of the times because they know implicitly that there's a zillion other options. So if it's hmm. not immediately amazing, like your brain's just like, well, there's another one oh. that I can move on to. Yeah. And when we have so many options, I think we just, yeah, we do kind of lose out on the community. And I don't know, society just does not seem configured, at least when you get to be our age, it doesn't, it doesn't seem configured to encourage no. community. You have to be sort of a, a weird person who purposely sets it up. Yeah, we're all we're all lone wolves in our own in our own apartments with our own blenders, or it, you or, know? or lone lone couples maybe. That's true. You know, so like yeah, lone wolves or lone couples. When you have roommates, you kind of have that. But then, I, I guess like the societally mandated path of progression is to eventually leave the roommates. Yeah, you know, and you may want to, but you well, do lose out on something. And I also think it's actually valuable to have the people around all the time even at the times where you don't, you like argue, you don't agree with them all the time. I think that mm-hmm. we become really conflict averse the more we, yeah. we get out of practice mm-hmm. with being around people we disagree with. Yep. So, you know, but those are some weird societal things. I don't know how to solve that right now. I like the, we're all lone wolves with lone, with our own blenders. Yeah, we got our own <laughs> blenders. Just picturing like a wolf out in the forest. It's like looking around, making sure no one's using his blender. Yeah, well, they got to make a nice smoothie. It's the best way to get your it is. hit of nutrients in the morning. Yeah, toss the carcass in there. Yep. Ugh. I don't like that smoothie. <laughs> That's bad. All right. Number nine. Um, and this is going to seem similar to another one that we talked about, but it's different. Don't work on yourself because people should like you just the way you are. And if they don't, it's their loss. Mm, so if I have negative traits, I should just leave them. Just leave them. Look, if somebody was going to be your friend, they would understand and they would deal with you. If you can't handle me at my worst, then I actually have no best. Don't be my friend. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. So what? here's what I should do, though. If I'm an introvert and I don't like doing things, every single time somebody asks me to do something, I shouldn't go. I exactly. should. I should never sacrifice my immediate personal comfort until I get to the point that they never ask me again because they assume the answer is no. Yep. Boom, and then goal achieved. Now you're alone forever. Yeah, now they won't even invite me to things because they just know I'll say no. They want me there, but I've given them all the answers they needed. Yep. So when I say work on yourself here, this is another callback to our significant other episode where we talked about how you know a lot of people, they, they're so frustrated that they can't 
find a girlfriend or boyfriend and they think like hey, there should be just somebody out there who loves me for who I am. And it's a great sentiment. It does, it does sound nice. It's a great sentiment, but, you know, and, and once somebody does love you, they may love you in spite of negative qualities. But when you work on yourself, you make yourself more attractive to be around. Yeah. You know, like we talked about in the last episode, there's so many connections here. Um, when you have built relationships through, say, volunteering or leadership positions, then the people who are judging your work for other things will probably give you more attention. Whereas if it was just like a lineup, they're only going to go for the best, objectively best looking thing. So when you're not, when you haven't already forged strong bonds of friendship or strong bonds of, uh, of romantic love, then people are just looking at these outward qualities. Are you physically attractive? Have you worked on your hygiene? Do you dress well? Do you speak well? Have you worked on your emotional intelligence? Can you listen well? And, you know, the more you work on yourself in these areas, the more attractive as a friend you're going to become. Yeah, I got to say being stubborn, especially about like the hygiene thing is not going to help you because every time they're just like, hey, listen, I want to hang out, but you never shower. And you're just like, I don't have to shower. This is who I am. Yep. That's not, I mean, that's a good way to not have any friends. That's like, like no, This isn't who you are. This is the bacteria on you. And Please I, remove it. I would like to be friends with you, not your bacteria. And uh, also, actually, I think this is a really important concept here. It's hard to word it a little bit, but what is you exactly? Oh, you, we could get reductionist about this. You are not a static thing. Yep. I am not just a person who apparently doesn't like showering, and I play video games. I mean, the vast majority of your am, body replaces I'm an, itself. I am an ever-changing being. I can choose to like and do different things along with everybody around me. So, like, don't work on yourself. You're gonna be. You're gonna stagnate. Life yep. is about you know lots of ever changing things. Everything's ephemeral, including the version of you that doesn't like to shower unless you choose to keep that. But growth is great for you, even if you didn't have friends. That's still important to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, growth mindset. It's a big thing. Like even View if you, your identity as something that can change. Yeah, you want to live out in the woods and really have no friends. Still work on yourself. Yeah. Well, but, you got to keep getting better at trapping beavers and. Yeah, you know, you, and you gotta you gotta start questioning shoes. the philosophy behind it. Why do I capture? Why do I trap the beavers? Yeah. Why do I, why do I trap the fish? What does it mean? What do I share with them? And then you get really deep, and then you realize you do need friends so that you can talk about philosophy. This is true. You could talk to the beavers about philosophy. No, no, <laughs> they're not gonna talk back. No, they're not very good conversationalists. They're pretty bad at it, actually. At least with us. What if they talk about philosophy between themselves and we just don't know? Maybe. <laughs> I have to think about that. I'll check. Like, what if animals have ways of communicating about deep concepts and we just have no idea? I mean, I, I, I definitely think that animals are much smarter than we'd know how to check. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to get it. I mean, I can't for sure prove that you're conscious. I can't see through your consciousness. So, That's true. So what do I know about other people, let alone other creatures? I could totally be an NPC. It's true. Everybody could be. Or we're both NPCs. You're or an NPC. Are you an NPC. You're not real. <laughs> I like how we both did that joke at the same time. <laughs> it's okay. Don't think about it. Just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. As you are programmed to do. <laughs> when you wake up, you'll forget that I told you the truth. Which of us is the protagonist? Which of us is the player? I don't know. I don't know. Is this a choose your own adventure? Who gets to pick? This just reminds me of the Bostrom simulation ar argument. If we will ever have the technology to make simulations, then we're probably in the simulation. Like yeah. If, if you can simulate many universes, then that means like 99% probability you're one of the simulated, not one of the original. But I'm cool with that. Yeah, I mean... If I'm part of a simulated ephemeral reality, then I'm going to simulate it be happy with it. At, at a certain point, it the, what is this? The, we're going to go way off topic right now. <laughs> but... At, at that point, what is a simulation? If I simulate an apple, the thing that makes it a simulation is that in the end, it, it doesn't really function. It's not really an apple. It doesn't function as an apple. If I could eat it and it tastes, smelled, and felt like an apple and everything, for all intents and purposes, it's an apple to me. So at what That's point true. does it become its own version? It's its own reality. Because I guess, yeah, even if we're all the originals, like everything's an atom. It's just a collection of atoms at, at, at a fundamental yeah. level. Yeah. And at a possibly even more fundamental level, it's like quantum foam or whatever. But from... You, as a human's perspective, like the parameters of of an apple, it would make it an apple whether it was made of code or atoms. It, it doesn't matter to me. Atoms could be code. I don't care. Like, if it's sufficiently real, 
is it really? It's a simulation maybe to the people who made it, but not to the people inside it. Yeah, it's true. It's all perspective, man. So this is a great way to make friends. Go to bars, have this conversation out loud as if with everybody and see who talks to you, you about it. You know what, it. though? This, honestly, like, if that would, you're interested be really interesting in this debate. kind of stuff, like, bring it up. Because I've met people who, you can tell, they just are itching to get past the small talk. Now, some and people hate small talk. We're afraid to bring up the things that we think are interesting because we think we're going to seem weird. But a lot of times people, they'll get interested in who it. Who cares if it's weird? I might not be real. Yeah. <laughs> A friend asked me recently, they, they just asked, uh, what's something that you're weirdly interested in, but you don't talk about a lot? And I was like, oh, yeah, the development of friendly artificial intelligence. Like, I'm super interested in that. Oh, that's a really interesting question. Now I want to think about it. See, that's the kind of stuff that really gets you in there, though. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I had a, a, another, another friend of ours was like, what are, you, what are you passionate about? Like, right now in your life, what are you doing? What are you, what are you really excited about? These are the questions that people want you to ask them. Yep. They want to talk about what they love. Mm-hmm. Just everybody instead asks dumb questions like, like you go to your family reunion and all they ask is, where do you work? What if you hate your job? What if that's not what you want to talk about? Yeah. Maybe you love it, but maybe they just asked you about the worst part of your life and you're like, but no, no, ask me about my side project. Mm-hmm. I knit Pokemon. They're awesome. Come on. So I think if you're going to ask that kind of a question, uh, you should have an answer in your back pocket. Oh, just yeah, in yeah. Case. Otherwise. So it's a gamble, right? Because you're going to have some people who just, oh, I've been really wanting to talk about artificial intelligence, man. Like, yeah, thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity to go in on it. And some people are just going to think that that question is too broad. They're like, I, I don't know. And then you can say, well, one thing that I've been into recently is, yeah, you know, the development of uh, non-friendly artificial intelligence because I want to have the entire human species erased. Yeah, well, I feel like even wow. if they have an answer, they might politely defer back to ask you the same question. Yeah. Just uh, You probably shouldn't ask questions deeper than you could answer yourself about, like... <laughs> That's true. I guess I guess you could if you're like, well, actually, I don't really have any hobbies, and I'm really asking people what mm-hmm. they're into because I want to kind of discover something. That actually seems like a decent way to respond to that if that's what you're doing. Yeah, the art of conversation is, like, you're basically throwing out threads for people to grab onto and questions do that but also talking about your own things do that yeah because you may say something that gets them interested oh this is you know this is actually part of introducing yourself and all this stuff is you're throwing out all these threads but you're not overwhelming them with every fact about yourself yeah if i met somebody and listed off all the various things i've read books on or been interested in they are going to be very overwhelmed and think i'm showing off Mm -hmm. that's not cool so what like it's a lot better to not overwhelm them a little bit at a time as it comes up organically and you throw out little threads. And if they don't ask further, if they don't talk on that thread, you don't talk about that topic. You say, okay, we won't talk about that. You're not yeah. like, come on, no, I'm waiting. This whole conversation, I'm not listening to you because I'm waiting to talk about this thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Throw out threads, but let the threads not be grabbed. Yeah. Sometimes they don't want to talk about that and you just move on in a different direction. That's true. Well, that's our list. Yeah. So... If, if you don't dig into all the exposition and you just listen to the core nine tips. That's true. Then very soon you will be a lonely basement dweller playing half of a boyfriend with no friends in real life. Or a lonely dweller of a well-lit attic with plenty of sunlight true. and books. You know what? Yeah. It was it was wrong for me to assume that just because you want to Maybe you be like a sunlight. friendless person, you also want to live in darkness and be a hermit. No, you like sunlight. You, you love know? the sun. Maybe you take a lot of long walks and you get your vitamin D and you live a healthy life, but you're just super lonely. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> you could probably write a lot of poetry. You could write a lot of poetry, you know? And there's value in being alone too, sometimes. No, I think you should definitely spend some time alone. Yeah, you definitely should. Anyway, um, I would imagine that everyone who's listening to this has probably spent the last hour alone. Yep. Except for the one person who does have CIG podcast listening What's up? parties. Shout out to that person. Dopest parties around. <laughs> that is the dopest party around. Like, how could you have a better party than that? Hey, that's the thing you could invite your friends to. Like, I know we're just like work proximity associates, but you want to come over tomorrow and like listen to this personal development podcast? Yeah. Just on my Bluetooth speaker. Make fun of us like we're a bad movie. <laughs> you know, like you watch a really bad old horror movie just so you can like point out all the flaws. Just put on the video. Make fun of my clothes. Yep. That's how you make friends. Every time Tom laughs at his own bad joke, yep. take a drink. 
Yep. <laughs> Just say something like, thanks, Dad, and then <laughs> that's how you do it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what is this episode? 243. 243. So, do you want to find the show notes for this episode? Uh, one thing that I'm definitely going to have linked in the show notes are the two videos that I did earlier this year on how to make friends and how to strengthen your existing friendships over on my YouTube channel. Those are less ironic. They're a little more straightforward in how I recorded them and wrote them. Uh, so you can check those out at our show notes page, which you can find over at cigpodcast.com slash 243. So definitely check that out. You may also want to check out our resources page over at collegeinfogeek.com slash resources. That's where you can find many of our favorite apps, tools, gear, books that we recommend, lots of cool stuff that can help your educational experience make it easier and more optimized. Um, you know what we need to do? We need a link to the College Packing Guide and the Essential Books Guide on the resources page because we sort of yes. changed yes, the design. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. And yes, so we, we can. Get something good. Yeah, we, I will be, be the change I want to see on this site. Good. Yeah, be the change you want to see. If you enjoy this podcast, or if you enjoy this episode, or the entire show in general, and you want to support it, a couple of ways you can do that. Number one, over on Apple Podcasts, they have a rating and review system. So give us a five-star review, a rating, and then write us a review if you want to support the show. I believe, I mean, Apple Podcasts is kind of a black box, but I believe the ratings and reviews at least contribute to our show rising up the ranks and getting out to new people. So that's a great way to support the show and get it out if you want to. And of course, you could always just share it with a friend, maybe send them your favorite episode and they may become a listener to the show as well. Um, last but not least, that's it. Yep. Oh, last but not least, I usually tweet send me a- pictures of your cat. I, yeah. love, I love cats. Send us pictures of your cat. Yeah, I'm uh, Tom Frankly on Twitter and you're Joe <laughs> Bartholomew. Send us cat pictures. Yeah. We're going for this I'm now. excited. Yes. I hope we get at least one. Yes. Actually, that's a good way to find out if people are listening to the entire podcast. Yeah. Like, do they do the weird thing we ask them to do at the end of the episode? I do love cats. Send, I will I will like your photos. Send cat pictures. Just so you know. This is needed. We will give them hearts on Twitter. If you've always, always wanted a heart on Twitter <laughs> and that's your validation, this is how you do it. That's true. Yep. All right. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you in next week's episode. Stay cute.